You know, we often talk about on these channels the types of jobs that all security guards should look into. We talk about our industry creating a better narrative around what it is that we're doing and how to just in general make more money. But the unfortunate thing is that with the rise of the large corporate security companies, that really only leaves a lot of jobs for that low end entry level security guard to kind of take things that are a little bit more dangerous. Right now I'm here at Husky Stadium here at the University of Washington and I've been actually looking into uh, seeing how they do their security for things like football games, basketball games, and just talking to some people that are in the industry. But it made me think about some of those lower end jobs that we all gravitate to because it's easy money and it's easy, uh, easy access. But with easy money and easy access comes the one thing that we try to avoid as much as possible, and that's danger. So today we're gonna to talk about the top five jobs that you should avoid in security. Stay tuned for today's debrief. Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy, a typical security guard today coming to you from beautiful Washington University. And today we're gonna to be talking about the five, top five rather, security jobs that you should avoid. As always, if you're getting any benefit from the videos that we're making, that we're uploading, please like, share, subscribe. You know, the best way for you to be notified of the videos that I am uploading is to hit that little bell icon that looks like this, right? And if you feel so compelled, guys, you know that you can donate to our training fund. Guys, if you haven't learned by now, my channel is specifically set up to motivate, to educate, and to help train entry-level security guards so that we can be safer and we can bridge that gap between what we're doing in security and law enforcement. And we can only do that via education. So if you feel compelled to donate, the donation link is going to be right below. All right, so let's get right into it. Now, each one of these jobs that I'm gonna talk about, I have actually either participated in or am currently working in. So I talk about this from firsthand knowledge. Guys, number five is going to be strip clubs. Now, listen, I know the allure of the strip club is something that so many of us, specifically when we're younger and maybe even when we're a little bit older, we tend to gravitate to, listen, the idea of having access to beautiful women, to being around them, to being in a potential position of being a protector, I know that that can be appealing. But I'm telling you from firsthand experience, the one thing that people fail to understand or fail to take into account when working security at a strip club is that you are putting yourself in between three things that are extremely dangerous. Number one is beautiful, seemingly accessible women. And I say seemingly accessible because there's a lot that goes along with that, right? Beta males, men who are either having to pay for attention or having to pay for interaction and alcohol. Those three things are a deadly combination. And typically you end up getting in between one or two of those things. Strip clubs, um, they generally cater to two types of clientele, the lower end of the spectrum and the high end of the spectrum. Now let me talk to you about the difficulties with you working security. Let's take the lower end. Now clearly the lower end of the spectrum should go without saying. If you are around or working with or interacting with people that just don't have a lot to lose and you're allowing them to get drunk, you're allowing them to interact with you know, beautiful women or seemingly available women, that is something that is a recipe for disaster. That can get you into a situation where if you have to go hands-on, if you have to uh, potentially subdue someone or interact with someone in a negative way, you could potentially hurt them or more than likely they're gonna potentially hurt you because they truly have nothing to lose. Now let's talk about that high end of the spectrum. If you're working at some of these higher end strip clubs like Atlanta, Los Angeles, California, um, Vegas, right? 
these type of places cater to people with a lot of money. And these are people that if you find yourself having to go hands-on or getting into an altercation with them, you can find yourself on the wrong end of a lawsuit. Typically, I think it's always best to stay out of things that tend to overload the passion of a situation. And when you have women, alcohol, beta males, money, and sometimes a lot of drugs, the strip club can be a recipe for disaster. Please avoid that one. Similar to number five is gonna be number four, and that is hip hop after parties, right? So these uh, concerts that happen all across the country, you'll have these uh, local nightclubs, local bars, uh, local spots that will throw these hip hop after parties. Now, sometimes these after parties are actually sponsored by the artists themselves. Sometimes they're sponsored by the record label or radio stations, but a lot of times people take advantage of hip hop artists that are in town and they quote unquote throw an after party. These after parties tend to just be your normal nightclub, your run of the mill pop up and they advertise that the potential artists might stop by. Now listen, let's be honest. If Drake is in Portland and I have a nightclub or access to a nightclub and I'm throwing a party with a lot of beautiful women, a lot of champagne, yeah, it's possible that Drake might stop by, but he doesn't necessarily mean he's gonna be stopping by, right? So these types of events, they tend to cater to people that are number one already hyped up and aggressive from the type of music that they're listening to. Hip hop, rap, that type of music, I'm a big fan of it, but let's be honest, a lot of it glorifies drug culture, a lot of it glorifies violence, a lot of it glorifies kind of that underbelly of society. And when you have people that have been listening to that for a long time, you have people that are, that are kind of hyped up on that, it can be very easy for them to bring that into the atmosphere of that nightclub you being security and you're having to interact with these people, that can put you in a situation where you could potentially get into a fight, potentially get stabbed, potentially get stopped, shot. So you wanna make sure that you're avoiding situations like the hip hop after party. Similar to number four, number three is the rodeo or country Western event. Now listen, the same way that hip hop culture uh, glorifies you know, gang violence and drug culture, and sex and money, country western, specifically your rodeo environment, everybody there is pro to A, everybody. And I have worked a couple of rodeos, specifically we had a rodeo here right outside of Portland uh, three weeks ago where a fight broke out and a guy was shot and killed. Guys, this happened four or five feet away from multiple security guards. So putting yourself in a situation where you're around a large number of people that are heavily armed, right? A large number of people that are um, very, let's just say macho, right? Very um, aggressive, right? Because of the atmosphere that they're in. And, and you mix that along with alcohol, you're putting yourself in a potential situation where if you have to go hands-on, it's gonna go south. I cannot tell you guys how many times security guards have been beaten up, have been jumped, have been stomped out, and here in the area have been shot and killed dealing with people at rodeos. Not to mention your normal country and Western clientele that you have uh, in that rodeo circuit. You also have a lot of Brazilians and a lot of uh, Mexicans that are involved in the rodeo culture, right? All of this leads to a culture of, um, how do I want, I wanna say this in a way that's not offensive to anybody, but both of these cultures, they're heavily lie on, on, on respect and on uh, appreciation for, for the male of that culture, right? So saying the wrong thing, coming off the wrong way, a lot of that can go south super quick. You being a security guard and being told to, you know, watch an access point or deny entry to certain things, specifically with the situation that happened a couple of weeks ago here in Portland, the security guards were tasked with patting down everybody that came into the rodeo. And if someone came in and they had a firearm, they were supposed to enforce the no firearm policy and send these people back to their truck or deny them entry. You're talking about groups of people and you're talking about a culture of people that they're not going to allow themselves to be disrespected. And when you mix alcohol along with that, you're, you're creating this this environment for that security guard who already has very little, if any, authority, and most of the time has very little, if any, training to deal with these situations, you're putting them in a position where they are going to get hurt. 
And guys, I'm telling you, that's exactly what happened a couple of weeks ago and what tends to happen uh, in most of these situations. So my advice, please avoid the country western rodeo situation. A little bit different than the others, number two doesn't normally involve drugs or alcohol, but it involves something potentially much more dangerous, and that is ideological rage. Number two is staying away from far right and far left political protests or riots. Now, it's kind of odd to hear me say that, seeing as how I spent the last six months of last year working the George Floyd protests and the Black Lives Matter riots. Guys, I routinely have to work protests and riots that deal with Antifa or the defund movement or the Occupy movement. And when I tell you guys what I'm about to say, I mean this with 110% sincerity. This to me, aside from number one, is probably the most potentially dangerous thing that we can be doing because you're talking about someone's either religious conviction or their political beliefs. And those are so polarizing to people on both sides. Guys, I have been at riots, I have been at protests where multiple people have pulled out AR-15s. I had a uh, situation last year during one of the Black Lives Matter protests where someone ran their car over somebody on a motorcycle that actually drugged them about a half a block. These situations, the tempers um, flare up, the emotions flare up, and people uh, specifically right now in this climate are so tied to their beliefs. When you're talking about religious protest or religious demonstration, a lot of that tends to lead towards uh, anti-abortions uh, or abortion clinic demonstrations or things like the West Barrel uh, Baptist Church. All of these things, if you look in the news and you research them, they have led to bombings, they have led to shootings, they've led to doctors being murdered on their property. This kind of stuff, tends to lend and lead to the absolute worst level of human behavior. And guys, if you're working security, specifically if you're working as uh, a uniform security guard, you're putting yourself in a lot, a lot of harm. Here in Portland, anything that looks like a police officer, anything that seems like an authority figure, they are the target of groups like Antifa, uh, groups like BLM, things like that. So. If you're, if you're not certain with what you're doing, you're not comfortable in your training, you're not comfortable in the people that you have around you, this is a very, very dangerous environment for you to be in. This is not something to take lightly, not something to mess around with. Guys, these, these situations and these environments, they are not, they're not jokes, they're not games. Guys, these are very, very, very highly volatile situations with people who are deeply tied to their beliefs. So if you are untrained or you feel uncertain about what you're doing, this is not the opportunity for you to get those reps in on the job training wise. You need to know what you're doing and be very comfortable and confident with what you're doing if you're gonna be working in that environment. Because I can tell you from firsthand experience, it is extremely, extremely dangerous. Please avoid far right and far left political and religious opportunities. Okay, you guys, before I go any further, let me just make this quick disclaimer. Before I say number one, I wanna just say that I understand that if you're starting a security company or uh, you're a partner in a security company, with the monopoly that these larger box chains have, there's not much left. Uh, there's a saying that there's not much meat left on the bone. Unfortunately for new companies, you're, you're forced to take contracts that other companies wouldn't take with a 10 foot pole or wouldn't even touch with a 10 foot pole, right? I get that. And at the end of the day, you have to provide for your family. You have to do what's best for you and for the people that you're in charge of and taking care of. I 110% understand that, but I cannot stress this enough. The number one location that you absolutely should not ever work under any circumstances is a housing project. Guys, listen, the housing project in the quote unquote hood is the hub for everything illegal and nefarious. And that's within good reason. Guys, listen, people that are underserved, people that are underprivileged, people that uh, have been left to their own devices with no industry, no economic base, I get it. They have to provide for themselves any way that they know how, any way that they can. And nine times out of 10, that's gonna be illegal activity. Your job as a security officer 
is specifically to observe and report. Observe and report goes against every aspect of the code of the hood. Snitches get stitches, especially those wearing shirts that say security across it, right? Everyone knows that you have very little, if any, authority and you have generally zero backup. You are putting yourself in the ultimate, the ultimate level of harm's way, guys, by working in these housing projects. The fact that you can upset someone, piss somebody off, say the wrong thing, um, just, just, there's so many opportunities that I don't think that I have to go into a lot of detail here, but the, the, the lack of, of backup, the lack of working in terms of partners, and a lot of you working unarmed security in these positions. Guys, this is absolute lunacy. Do not do it, do not do it, do not do it. There is absolutely no reason why you should be working in housing projects, specifically those housing projects in those lower income areas. I truly believe that you're putting yourself and your life on the line. Guys, listen, I understand that this could be a difficult topic. I mean, absolutely no disrespect to anyone who is currently working in any of these industries. You've got to make your money. Each person has to make the best decision for themselves and what's best for them and their family. And I 110% get that. But I want to share my opinion and guys, all these videos, just my opinion. Okay. As always, I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank you for listening to me ramble. I want to thank you for listening to my opinion. And as always, if you're getting any benefit, please share this with another security guard and let's continue to build our community. The bigger our community, the more that we can share our information, our knowledge and our experience, the more that we can change the narrative around security as a whole. As always, be great. Watch for six. Take care.